I've got into the habit of asking for all my blood test results. I think it's so important because when a doctor says, oh, it's all right, or take this medication, you're basically blind to what he says and to his opinion. And every doctor has a different opinion, so that's really quite worrying. But if you get your blood results, you've got hard science. And these are just some of the collection I have on file, which I'm putting up online so you guys can check out and just to see what it's all about. To be fair, once you've got all the data, it's not really very difficult to understand because on the form, they all have like a range of where they should be and then they have your result. So you can see if it's inside or not. Whenever you have blood results which are out of range, you have an asterisk by it. I've just gone through and highlighted everything so it's really clear. I can completely see everyone has 100% control over their own destinies. Having changed my diet in the past, my bloods have improved, etc. Or got worse, which is going to just give me an idea of what works and doesn't work. But it's really important to remember, Crohn's and colitis affects everyone differently. You might have got diagnosed a year ago, I got diagnosed 13 years ago, and I've had my guts damaged for longer than maybe some people, but also less than others. Because at the moment, the main thing for me is to get into complete remission forever. But this might take me a bit longer than you. I got this discharge letter with just a couple of blood results. And he said I was completely in remission, which is, to be fair, I've improved a lot. But then the bloods came straight after. And then like my albumin, which is like the key marker for disease, actually was showing that I was still in disease. But for me, I want to get to be 100% normal and not like 90%. So let's quickly just go to my whiteboard and I'll quickly just explain it in a bit more detail. The HBI is the Harvey Bradshaw Index. It's an index specifically made for Crohn's disease. It's an observational index based on symptoms. For instance, pain, are you eating well? Are you going to the toilet a lot? And for every bad symptom, you put a tick on the chart. You've got about five different categories of categorizing your state of disease. Number one is general well-being. Number two is abdominal pain. Number three is number of liquid stools per day. Number four is abdominal mass. Number five is the complications, e.g. like new fistula, etc. But like for every bad symptom, you put a, a point onto the chart. Above 16, you have severe disease. Below five, you're in remission. I got a zero, so that's fantastic. That made me so happy. I made a video about just this, but then a week after that, just before I was about to upload, I got the blood results. Because the thing is, I'm always emailing my doctors, and then eventually I got my blood sent to me, you see. Because I want you guys to know the complete truth, and nothing but the truth. And they were all basically perfect apart from my albumin. So let's just quickly go through the blood results. First of all, we've got hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is the protein in the red blood cells that transports oxygen around your whole body to tissues, organs, and then takes away the CO2 back to the lungs to be got rid of. I'm not putting any units in because it just confuses everybody, but this should be from 130 to 168. Now I'm at 150, dead on in the middle. I am so happy, full of energy, right? Last year it went down to 42. I mean, I could have died to be honest, but that's when I got four units of blood infused into me. Number two, we got iron, with the range being from nine to 29. I used to have mine no higher than two or three, even one before, and now it's eight. That's a huge improvement, but definitely on the low side. Iron, of course, is the essential mineral that helps create red blood cells in the body. Red blood cells which carry oxygen throughout your body. Next, we've got serum B12, which should be from 160 to 800. Mine is 876, which is a bit high, but from my research, what is seen as the normal range is actually the lower side of ideal in this case because i am supplementing with this actually because b12 is key for proper nerve function for your brain as well as blood cell production okay then we get to folate which is also known as b9 the range is from 126 to 480. Mine's bang on, on the higher end, 364. Folate is really important for DNA synthesis, but also, you guessed it, blood cell production. And that's why I put these just below hemoglobin. Because in theory, if your hemoglobin is low, then it could be because of any of these being 
deficient. So next we get to full blood count. This is done for every patient, no matter what disease they have. It's a very good indicator of general health. With my disease, this is overshadowed because I have so many other problems, but only now have I realized, looking back to all my blood results, that this is a reflection of everything else. Before, these used to be chronically low for me, and now they're bang in the middle, where they should be. Mean corpuscular volume is the average amount of red blood cells in your blood. For instance here, you can see the MCV should be 84 to 99, and mine's 85 now. This was also put in my discharge letter, that's why my doctor was so happy, because that was completely fine. In fact, when he get, sent me the blood results, he ignored something that's never been wrong, but it was slightly above average and that was the red blood cell distribution but from the rest it would appear that can be ignored then we get to the C reactive protein this is a really important marker for anybody with an autoimmune disease because this protein fluctuates in direct response to inflammatory processes in the body this is a great indicator for every autoimmune disease because where there's inflammation there's damage damage that is caused by your own immune system going haywire. It should be from 0 to 5 and mine's 11.6. And then we get vitamin D. It should be from anywhere from 70 to 150, mine's 79. It can still be higher, it's been a lot lower, about 60 before. Cod liver oil really helped me with that one, but also just being in the sun of course. Because I did read that 82% of IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, sufferers have a deficiency in vitamin D. So when you go to the beach, it's actually part of your health routine. Don't think of it as wasted time and don't put too much sun protection, put a low grade, or don't go in the middle of the day out in the sun, but fully expose your skin, but to the lighter sun in the morning or in the evening. And then we got fecal calprotectin. Calprotectin is the protein that gets released when there's inflammation specifically in your gut. This is a very specific indicator for any diseases like Crohn's or colitis or any cancers in your intestines. It should be less than 50 and mine's 565. Before it was up to almost 1900. So that's a quarter reduction. This is amazing, but it's still 10 times what it should be. There's a lot of improvement that's gone on, but it won't happen overnight. I've had this disease for over half of my lifetime. Like reading, and just like from common sense, if you've had the disease wreaking havoc on your body for over a decade, compared to if you've just been newly diagnosed to it, you're gonna have different results, right? Like for me, I'm just gonna have to keep exercising and eventually it will get down. Because if you're more damaged, it's gonna take longer to heal compared to if you're less damaged. This the doctor didn't tell me about and that's why I was so not happy when he didn't write it on the letter because I was getting really excited about like the improvements. Even if the improvements aren't as good as I, I like, I'd like to just be informed. Especially as I'm on no medication, you see. Then we get to albumin, which is the most abundant protein in your blood plasma, accounting for about 50% plus. It's produced in the liver. And it's key for distributing hormones, fatty acids, and other important bodily compounds around your body. And because it's so abundant in the blood, it's really key for keeping the correct osmotic pressure. I've always had my albumin slightly low. So whenever I go for blood pressure tests, I'm always on the lower side and I always get my blood pressure retaken. And this is not even close to 35. So this is what's going to keep me motivated, fighting, fighting, fighting for pure, real health, medication free. When I did a long extended fast, this went to 40, which was right in the middle. So I know it can go up. It's not like it can't go up. When I was having meal replacement shakes, I did get this up to 35, which was good. Uh, but obviously meal replacement shakes are only for the short term, along with extended fasting. You can't do that forever. If my bloods normalize, experimenting further with yoga, with eating healthier, with being in the sun, with relaxation, with mindfulness, that will kind of show that that might actually make sense. 
because it's so hard to tell from yourself, before I was feeling so amazing and strong that I thought everything had normalized, but obviously not completely. Maybe I just need to be patient. That's true. But stay healthy, stay happy, and see you next time. Oh, one second. If you have any questions, please do send them to me about this video or any videos you might want me to make.